I'm not a lawyer, but today was the sentencing hearing for Hannah Payne. So let me recap how it went. Two of Kenneth Herring's sisters and one of his brothers got on the stand to give some impact statements. I'll never see my brother again, only through pictures. The same sentence that she gave him, I would like to see the same sentence given to her. I feel that whatever the court gives her, which should be life without parole, she deserves more. And then a couple people from Hannah's side also got on the stand. The first was a family friend. Those that love her understand that a tragedy here occurred. And we ask the court to look into her heart and know that she is a human worthy of saving. And then a coworker of Hannah's got on the stand. I've been praying about things for a long time, and I want you all to know that I prayed over this building before I walked in today. I've been praying for you. I pray for the jurors. I pray for the prosecution attorney. I prayed for everybody. You've been prayed for today. And I ask, you know, that you find mercy. She's been um, portrayed as a vigilante, a racist, privileged I don't know if y'all are aware, and it, even if it makes a difference, but, um, you know, talking about not seeing color, um, Hannah, her high school boyfriend was a black man. She's been involved in, um, you know, a relationship now with, you know, a Dominican guy. Her best friends are black. There's all different colors in her life. I just want to make sure that she's portrayed in that light. And the last person was one of Hannah's neighbors. Following those statements, the state attorney gave some words of what they believe Hannah should be sentenced to. Mr. Herring was a human worthy of saving. He had a family to go home to. You have the authority in count one to sentence the defendant to life without parole as requested by the family. And we would ask that you consider their request and leave the choice as to whether or not the life is with or without parole in the discretion of this court. However, on the false imprisonment, if this court does choose to give this defendant life with the possibility of parole, it is the state's request that the 10 years on that false imprisonment run consecutive. And then on count six, you are required to give a consecutive five-year sentence and we would ask that it run consecutive to the false imprisonment for a sentence of life plus a consecutive 15 years. We will leave it within this court's discretion as to whether or not you think this defendant deserves a sentence of life with or without parole, but we would ask that you consider the statements made by the family in this case. Also, before jury selection, the state offered a plea deal to Hannah of life with the possibility of parole. She declined that offer. So at this hearing, the state attorney is requesting life, if with parole, 15 years to run consecutively, meaning one after the other. And then Hannah's defense attorney also gave some words. The court could take that in consideration of her age, the facts, the compassion, and uh, sentence her to life with parole and have the other charge run concurrent and probate that gun charge. I think it would allow her time to reflect to fully understand that things happen and it can be found to be wrong but it's how you handle yourself through that adversity to get through it and come back and show the true you is what allows us to keep hope in our heart and allows us to keep going he was requesting life with the possibility of parole and the false imprisonment charge to be run concurrently meaning at the same time and the gun charge to be a probation sentence and here's what the judge sentenced her to. With respect to count one, malice murder, the court will impose a sentence of life with the possibility of parole. With respect to count five, the false imprisonment uh, verdict, the court imposes a sentence of eight years consecutive. With respect to count six, possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony, the court imposes a sentence of five years that will run consecutive. 
So the court's total sentence is life with the possibility of parole plus eight years consecutive on the false imprisonment and five years consecutive on the possession of firearm during the commission of a felony. According to some tweets and docs I've seen, Georgia requires defendants to serve 30 years on life sentences before being eligible for parole. So that would mean 30 years for the life sentence plus 13 years for the other charges. So she would be eligible for parole in about 43 years. But y'all know I'm not a lawyer. There we go.